hello, my name is Sanjay. I am Bo in Bogota, Colombia, and I am founder of an organization called Soul Colombia. Uh, Soul stands for uh, self-organized learning environments. Here we go. Now I can share. Ah, oh, finally. Thank you. <laughs> this is a bit not so cool. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, can you see my screen? We can. Perfect. So uh, my quick talk is going to be about how we can converse the future of education into happening. And basically, I think we are all thinking about ways of how to change education, but it seems really tough to change education. No, it kind of doesn't move. It's like it's been stuck there. No, the way we learned, well, when I learned, I don't know, 30 years ago, seems to be similar to what my kids are learning now. And so uh, I wanted to say that, like, my mom gave me a poem the other day that I'd written when I was 12 years old. And I, can't, I don't like poetry at all. I, I don't remember writing poems, but I do realize that I'd always been concerned about uh, the inequity that there is in education, that the inequity that there is in the world. I live in Colombia. Here, rich people get rich education, poor people get poor education. And it's really tough to figure out how it is that we rebalance this. No, it's like the, the, the system is designed, capitalism is designed for you to have a moment in which. Uh, everything happens in which you can't change the system because the ones who have the benefit are always going to be the ones who have the benefit. So uh, I've always thought that together we can do much more than the sum of what we would do alone. And that's how we came through to creating Soul Columbia. My colleague Belen is here also on the screen in case you she, she can answer stuff through the chat. But the purpose of Soul Columbia is to design the future of learning and we do it using self-organized learning environments. Uh, this was invented by an Indian guy called Sugata Mitra. He got a TED prize back in 2013. And a self-organized learning environment is a space, a physical space, uh, like this one that you see in the picture, where you have people, kids, adults, uh, teens, uh, university students, less computers than people, usually one computer every three, four or five persons, and big questions, and we call them big questions because they're tough questions, they're interesting questions, they're something which is in everybody's general interest. So what happens in the process is that people self-organize to find the answers to the questions using their peers and using the internet. There's nobody teaching. So this is like a change in paradigm from the at least the way I went to school and then I went, I went to the university and the one I did when I went to my master's. And it's instead of telling the learners what they need to know, you ask them if they can find it out on their own. And that's a little bit of what we are trying to do here in Colombia. And our work is in the center of in the intersection of learning, but also dialogue and action. So I don't know if you all know, but in Colombia, eh, the government put tons of computers and, and internet in public spaces and public schools, public libraries, internet public like internet kiosks, kind of internet cafes, but they're public and in universities and so on. And many people don't use, and many of these places don't use these computers because people don't know what the internet for, is for. So what we do is we scale the sole methodology to these places. So we show the person who's in charge of the computer room and the internet, uh, 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 the computer room key, how to turn that into a self-organized learning environment. Having said that, uh, we've had teachers using soul, school teachers, university teachers using soul. We've had community leaders using soul. We've had librarians using soul. And for example, this one who's Maria, she, she, she works uh, in a school in Cartagena in Colombia. And she wanted her kids to be good citizens, participant active citizens. And so in her class, she started doing soul sessions to allow them uh, to decide what questions they wanted to ask and how they would solve them. So now she doesn't teach, she doesn't give a class. She just says, okay, what question are we working on today? And then she just leaves and come back, comes back at the end to, to see what answers they've come up with and have a discussion around that. And what's very powerful of this is that these kids started asking all the rest of the teachers of their school that they wanted to learn how they were learning with Maria. <laughs> and so the other teachers went to Maria and said, what, what, what the hell are you doing? And she said, I'm doing souls. And she said, how, they said, how you do that? In any case, the whole school started doing so and all of their both academic results, but like also 21st century skills, all these things which we talk about that education should be doing, these started to happen and this happened in a self-organized emergent manner. So it's very powerful to see that these tools can be used also in other communities. We have this, 
this kid here who you see on the screen, he's called Robinson. And when we showed him how to do soul, he had one of these internet kiosks in a rural area in, in coffee growing country in, in, in Colombia, where he only has good internet like at seven o'clock at night. And so he would bring the community together at 7 p.m. on Fridays to answer questions. And thanks to big questions like, how do I make my crop yield more? How do I make my, uh, uh, how do I have another source of income different than my crops? People started developing projects in bakeries. They started uh, setting up coffee uh, pro projects. They started uh, making bags out of recycled material. And it, so it shows a little bit that these communities with just a simple tool, which is self-organized learning, can really flourish to find their own solutions and livelihoods. So uh, maybe my final example is this indigenous community in the north of Colombia. This guy who you see on the screen giving the thumbs up, his name is Elainer, and he is uh, from the Wayu indigenous community, and his problem was how to help these kids of his community to value their indigenous uh, traditions, their culture, and their identity, and he did it through his soul, inviting them to, uh, asking them what it is that they were interested in. This, the kids said, no, we like videos, and we like video games, and we like animation, so he said, why don't you learn to make your own? And it turns out to, that to do any of these, you need, well, you need to know how to, you need a story to make a video game. You need a story to make a video. And so they went back to him and said, hey, Liner, yeah, we, well, uh, we did a soul and it turns out we need to have a story. And so he just threw the question back to them. Where do you get stories? And so they said, ah, we talked to the elders of the community. And that's how they started uploading onto the internet their stories of their indigenous uh, community just because they had the curiosity and the drive. So now what's very interesting is that back in 2020, when the pandemic started, this school, which is the same one of the kids which you saw in this first picture, <laughs> got closed because of pandemia and also rising violence here in Colombia. I, I don't know if you know, but we signed a peace agreement with the FARC guerrilla back in 2016 and things have gotten a little bit worse in these moments we realized there was a big need for reflection and the need to act to give vo voice to those which were most silenced. You know, the ones who suffered the pandemic the most were kids and youth who were locked in their houses for no reason and maybe without the proper tools for it. So we started a great conversation asking what the new school during and after the pandemic should look like. Basically because what had happened in 2020 uh, when we th started to think about it and we started to ask people, we started to ask Sorry, I'll go back here in just a second. We started to ask people of all ages in all sectors. We started to, we talked to students, to teachers, to moms and dads, to principals, to organizations. We started asking, doing soul sessions with that question, how should the new school be? And that's where we got our uh, idea of finding what people thought should be the future of education. And this is the result of that conversation. Uh, I'll put it in the chat briefly. It's in Spanish, but basically nine big ideas came out of this. The first is that we all need to be talking about education, not only the people who work in education. <laughs> so that's one of the tough things. And with the ideas of these communities, uh, both students, parents, et cetera, et cetera, what we started to see was that maybe two big ideas move how you change the system and the education system. And well, the first idea is that the why of everything is human contact. So everything you do with technology around education, around learning has to do with how you enhance possibilities for human contact. And that's one of the important things. So if you're gonna do a video call and maybe that's a better way of learning because you're meeting somebody than just if you're seeing a video. Or the other big topic which came up was if you change the evaluation system, the assessment system, you can change the system in itself. So with that, some small other ideas came into the education, the idea of what you should do in education, which had to do with letting go of control of the learning, well, returning to the pleasure of learning, um, simplifying education. No, education got a kind of com complicated, so many topics, so many things that you have to know and do. Let's go back to simple stuff, learning to speak, learning to write, learning to read, learning to draw, those kind of things might be more important. And maybe thinking of a new creative explosion in the, in the environments for learning. No, schools have become boring, universities have become very standardized. How do you make the, 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 the space where you work, work fine? 
And finally, the teachers are not the only educators, no? Like any uh, parents are educators, peers are educators, uh, the TV is an educator, the internet is an educator. So there's educators all over. So the schooling systems don't need to just base themselves on who is the instructor and who is the uh, apprentice. And finally, there were many ideas of what we shouldn't do again. And basically the what we shouldn't do has to do with that as the pandemic is coming to an end, schools are going back to doing the same thing they did in 2019 and universities are going back to doing what they were doing in 2019. So it's kind of like if we hadn't learned much uh, in this process. So having said that, I would like to finish with one idea which we have in this conversation. Sorry, my timer is kind of making a big noise. When we came back to our end of this conversation, we said, okay, so now what? We had a conversation with over 300 people from all places all around the country and a conversation uh, which took us to the point of, okay, what shall we do now? And maybe what we will do is start from understanding that everything is based on the assessment system. And if you change that, you can change everything. And how could that be? Well, our invitation is to invite people to converse about what if we changed our, uh, our exam-based system from asking questions to students to which they should know the answer for questions which do not have an answer. So I'll give you an example. What if your exam in, I don't know, ninth grade is, is there liquid water on Mars? No, nobody knows if there is liquid water on Mars. No, we, we don't have the answer to that. What if we just allowed uh, students, learners to come together using the internet and using their peers to research what they can find out about that and have discussion. And what you're assessing is not if they know the right answers, but if how they're able to collaborate, communicate, be creative, how, what, what, how their critical thinking is going, how they're able to self-direct their learning. And that could really change to get, take us to a change in the education system as a whole. So that's our invitation from Seoul, Colombia. Thanks for being part of this. It's been an honor to be with you today. Thanks. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you.